Hello, mate. How are you, Rob? You good? I'm good, mate. How are you? I've been on for two minutes. I've heard your band. It's getting stick. Oh, mate. <laughs> so this is the annoying thing. Like, I've just been complaining about um, quarantine and not having a barber. And you've turned up really well groomed. So now I'm really... You know what? I've not had no haircut or anything. It's, my, my beard's all right because my missus does that. She, she like, plucks it and tweezes it for me. So that looks sharp, but that's about it. It's good, man. The hair is long, though. It's a lot longer than the last. Yeah, it's getting years. stand down. It come down there now. I need to get it cut. <laughs> How are you doing, mate? Anyway, all right. Good, Jay. Not bad, you know. With the quarantine, um, doing what we can, keeping busy training, and uh, yeah, there's not really a huge amount you can do. I, I got bored of running in about in about three days, so but I ended up buying a bike last week. So I've been bike riding a bit more. <laughs> so yeah, just keeping busy. What about you? Uh, I'm keeping busy as well, but not been not been doing many many bike rides or runs. <laughs> been pretty much stuck behind the laptop for the last. I can imagine. Five weeks tomorrow was the last time I went out of the house, apart from anything, apart from the shop or anything like that. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not ideal, but um. Yeah. Got to keep on. One of those things on. that helps the most important thing, though. Yeah, of course. Fine, yeah. Well, at least um. We're getting some nice weather because it doesn't usually look like that up your part of the world, mate. You know what? You're right. It's, the weather's been beautiful, but like you say, like everyone's been saying to me, it would happen when it's when everyone's on, on a lockdown. So it's a bit of bad luck, but it's great to be outside right now. <laughs> mm, good, good stuff. Um, so what have you? Apart from the obvious, which you mentioned, kind of going out and walking and running and cycling, etc. What? have you been doing to fill your time? Because you're at the kind of stage of your career where, I mean, we spoke about this the last time I saw you in Leeds for the Josh Warrington yeah. press conference, but you need to be getting in the ring and if not in the ring, then in the gym and, and really kind of racking up that experience. But you've not got that at the minute. So I guess the question is, how do you stop yourself going crazy? Yeah, obviously, as you know yourself, last time we spoke, I was meant to be fighting on March 14th, Bill, that got cancelled. I think the, the main event uh, came off or something. And I was rescheduled a bit further down the line. And literally, three days before I was supposed to fight, everything got, got shut down, which is a headache. As I was literally, I'd, I'd been dieting and made weight. I was fit as anything. Um, but yeah, like I say, it's, got, it's, it's hard to keep your head right. But thank God I'm a, I'm a strong-minded person. I've been keeping busy in the gym. Um, obviously, as you know yourself, I've got a new coach of Angel. Um, and as much as I've not been able to go see him in person, we've been having FaceTime sessions. <laughs> He's been FaceTiming me in the gym. We tell me what to do, technically, uh, hitting the pads uh, with, my, with my mate and stuff while he's watching. And so, yeah, we've been keeping busy, and Angel's one of them guys, he's, he's right on your case. So, like, even now, after, after this video call, I've got, I've got a, a little session to do, um, and he wants videos to make sure I'm doing it as well. So, he's, uh, he's right on my case. <laughs> that's good, that's good. I mean, obviously, there's, um, I mean, even speaking from my job role, like waking up and not being allowed out, you kind of, you just think, oh, you know, I could just do what I want and no one will know. But obviously that's good that you've yeah. got you under, under proper lock and key. Let's just talk about that. I was going to come on to that as we kind of progressed our way through, but you've mentioned it now. Um, you've linked up with Angel Fernandez, obviously known yep. probably more recently for his work with Anthony Joshua and the Andy Ruiz remix. Uh, remix. Sorry, I got uh, distracted <laughs> by my previous boxing social usual platform to reach out to Kez. No problem at all, mate. No worries. Um, if you can get something done with Kez, um, I'm happy to... Uh, be the matchmaker in that regard. But yeah, um, talk to me about how it started. How did you and Angel Fernandez come to come to work together, Kev? So funnily enough, I've kind of, we've both been in contact for a long time, for about maybe a year and a half or something. Um, I always liked the work he was doing with Sultan Zorbeck. Um, I used to see him on Instagram. I followed him for a long time. And we had that bit of a, a mutual appreciation for each other because I, you know, I, I used to love his coach and he used to compliment me all the time. And he used to compliment me as, as a boxer. And uh, it must have been a year and a half ago when I said to him, I, bear in mind, I had no intention of leaving my coach at the time. But I said to him, about, it must have been a year and a half ago that if I ever do move coaches, you're the first person I'm coming to check out. And a year and a half down the line, I felt like it was the right time. And uh, like I said, I went straight to him. And it was one of those, it was quite, it was quite natural. And because we were kind of new to him from before, it was, it was, we had a good relationship. And uh, it was mad the way it worked out, really, because... Obviously, I'd seen him on social media, and you think you see you see the work he's doing, you think it's brilliant. And I spoke to Charles just as he started working with uh, Angel as well. I said to him, "So how good is it, Angel Fernandez?" Because um, I hadn't work, worked with him in person, and he said to me, "You know what, Kez? Seeing him at work is one thing, but when you work with him, 
it's unbelievable. That's exactly what happened when I went to see him. I went to, I went to see him. I did one session with him. And you can ask him this yourself. The first thing I said to him was, when do I start? <laughs> Simple as that. I was, I was ready to go. And straight away, I knew, I knew that, that one session in that, I wanted him as my coach. Even in a relatively short space of um, your professional career, obviously you've worked with a few coaches now. Uh, Angel Fernandez did a lot of his kind of apprenticeship under Jorge Rubio, who obviously did his apprenticeship under a guy that you know well in Ismael Salas. How yeah. similar, how much, how much of the stuff that you're doing with Angel Fernandez is similar or like the stuff that you were doing with Salas? Yeah, there are a lot of similarities, but Angel's, he's, he's one of them people, he's, he's always open to learning. And like literally every night he'll be watching boxing. <laughs> he'll be watching, studying boxing, studying coaches, all sorts. And he's he's one of them people who's who's full of knowledge for that reason anyway. And like you say, he had his, a sort of an apprenticeship under um, those great coaches. Um, but he's for me, he's he's got that Cuban style about him. But he's also very flexible. Like in, he's, he's also got that Eastern European style about him as well. So I, I believe he's. He's got a bit of everything, and he's put it all together, and that's what I, what I love the most about him. And he's, like he's, he's he's willing to learn and keep learning, and that's the most important thing. As, as like you say, even as boxers and as coaches, you never stop learning. Obviously, as I mentioned, the fact that he he kind of shot to prominence or a lot more notoriety from working with AJ in the Ruiz rematch. Obviously, AJ yourself is somebody that you know from your time in the amateurs. How impressed were you with the work that he was able to to implement on AJ's strategy for the Ruiz rematch? Yeah, so funny enough, believe it or not, first things first, I, after I did that session with Angel, I rang AJ, just to have a word of him. So, you know, I said to him, listen, guess what, I'm, I'm, I'm moving to Angel Fernandez. And the first thing he goes is, Kez, he's unbelievable, isn't he? And I was like, you know what, you've got the words. He took the words straight out of my mouth, he is unbelievable. And uh, and that just showed, shows, shows me, like, the stage that AJ is at, He's another person who's, who's quite similar to Angel, where he's always learning. He's he's always willing to learn, and he's 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 never he's, he will never be a close, finished article because that's what that's what us boxers are. We we keep learning as as we go on. But um, it showed me that at the level AJ's at, the coaching he's had, if he can even see the same things as I can see and see see how unbelievable he is, then he really is that good of a coach. And even the short amount of time that he's 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 been he's been coaching. But yeah, with AJ, you can see see a huge difference. Um, first things first, that's the best I've seen AJ box in terms of, you know, technical boxing. It's the best I've seen him box. Yeah, you know, people are saying all, all all that stuff about oh, he's running and blah blah blah. But who's gonna want to stand in front of it in front of Ruiz when, especially after the way the first fight went? Who's gonna want to stand in front of him? I, for me, it was the perfect tactics. And AJ implemented them perfectly, and uh, yeah, you can see you can see that big change and that big difference in in uh, the coaching. Sorry, once once he'd been coached with coached by Angel as well as Rob. We're getting a few uh, questions in here. One of these ties in nice part of what we're talking about now from um, Hamad Javed eighty two. What changes uh -huh. are you hoping Angel will bring to your fighting game? Um, there's plenty of things what we're working on as we speak, uh, but. A lot of more, a lot more rotation work, and I want to be that that come forward counter puncher because I've always been a counter puncher anyway. Um, and for me personally, sometimes I can be a bit too much in the back foot, even though it's been getting every, better every single fight, um, and I've been coming forward a lot more every single fight. But I want to be that come forward counter puncher, and like I say, I want to I want to make people pay, and that's what we're what we're working on in the gym. Obviously, you mentioned that kind of conventionally being more of a back foot fighter. Obviously, you enjoyed a lot of success as an amateur. A lot of coaches who I speak to, I think probably the vast majority of coaches I speak to when they're dealing with somebody who's had a lot of success out of the amateurs or even a lot of success in their professional career, it's very, very, very rare that they say to me, I want to change this, change that. Change it. it doesn't ever often require a huge overhaul or a complete, a complete reset of their style. Is that the kind of thing we can expect with you and Angel? Obviously, just tweaks here and there and not a complete overhaul. Yeah, definitely. So, to, to be honest, the whole becoming a come forward counter puncher, that was, it wasn't just Angel saying it, it was me as well. And that's because that's what I, what I want to be myself. Because um, in terms of counter punching, I believe I've got that, you know, that, that side of the boxing perfect. So, just to come forward a little bit more in, in, in my moments. But yeah, definitely, as, as, as you know yourself, I've got this far. 
with my style and even in the amateurs because it was, it was so short rounds I was quite a bit more come forward than I am these days but like I say I'm getting new, I'm still getting used to rounds I'm still you know improving as a pro I'm only eight fights in um, so I'm learning on, learning on the job but yeah Angel me and Angel we are looking to obviously tweak little things because th there'll never be a huge amount of difference I've been boxing 19, 20 years now um, your body gets used to what, what it does and especially under pressure your body will do what it's used to but yeah, like I said, there will be definitely little, little tweaks, and as you could, like, like you see with uh, AJ and his last last performance, I believe it'll be very noticeable. What do you think the biggest um, challenge has been from you turning over, both inside the ring and outside the ring? Because the pros and the amateurs are both very, very different. They're both very different sports, but they're also one's a business and one isn't. What have you found the most difficult in and outside the ring? The business side of stuff has been quite difficult, um, but in terms of boxing side, it's for me. It's it, I've always believed in my head, once I get used to the 10, 12 rounds, then no one's beating me. Simple as that. And like that, that's all I've been, been doing the past, the past eight fights is getting used to longer rounds. And that does take a bit of time. So, so for me, it's not so much I need to change loads of things in my, in, in my, in my, uh, in my arsenal. But I do. The most important thing at the moment is getting used to rounds and being comfortable in the rounds and knowing how to work the rounds at the right time and stuff like that. And for me, that's the biggest difference because style-wise, I believe I'm, I like, I am a counter puncher, but I can come forward, forward a little bit more. But as soon as I get used to the rounds, I'll be more confident doing that, and that'll make a, a huge difference. And try and get through some of these comments and questions. Um, again, sort of tied in UA three one. I missed the start. Is Kez training with Angel now? Yes, he is. Zyman. Uh, da -da. Zyma Ahmed, I hope I've said that name right. I swear I'm a huge Kez fan, and if Kez does not notice me now, it was his. What's the name? Zyma Ahmed, I think. Zyma Ahmed, I think. There you are. I've seen you. Thank that. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for that. Thank you for the support, and uh, keep supporting. We've got big, big things coming up. Certainly has. Um, last fight you were in. Well, you, you're the WBA Continental Champion now. Is that right? Yeah. So, is that going to be where we kind of see you settle and challenge for titles down at Super Bantamweight? No plans on moving up? Or... Right now, Super Bantamweight is my weight. Um, I believe I make it perfectly for, what, for how I need to make it right now. Um, and the good thing, well, for me, for me, in the next couple of fights, I want to be challenging and winning the British British title and British and Commonwealth because the kid who's who's got it has got has got both. So, that's what my what, in my opinion, um, what I'm looking at in, in the immediate future. Obviously, I've just signed, well, sorry, I've just uh, turned, uh, changed coach with Angel. So, there might be a fight or two in between, just because I've had so long out. I've not boxed since November. Um, and just to get used to me and Angel together. But yeah, in the, in the immediate future, in, in the next couple of fights, I want to make sure I, I win the British and Commonwealth title. And the reason why I said that is obviously because I was going to lead into the British and Commonwealth. We saw um, Lucian Reed and Brad Foster. I mean, the first fight, a lot of people kind of edged towards Lucian Reed and potentially. I thought him. he won it. I'm not going to lie. I thought he won. I thought Lucian won that first fight. And then you look at the second fight, and it was a complete dominance from Brad Foster. Really impressive yeah. performance. What did you take from that? For me personally, actually, the first fight I thought Lucian won. Then the second fight, I heard there was a lot of uh, rumors about. Foster not making the weight properly and stuff like that, um, but it just seemed like a pure opposite to me. Like the first fight, Foster didn't turn up and Reed did. The second fight, Reed didn't turn up and Foster did. So it was just it was just a, a, a complete turnaround. But yeah, I don't really look look too much into that. Um, believe it or not, me and Angel have already spoken about Brad Foster, and uh, we're looking forward to you know getting all of them, getting them in the ring, and and uh, taking them that British and Commonwealth title off him. Obviously, you mentioned the first fight. I mean, I had the first fight for Lucian Reed as well. Lucian is, as I mentioned, somebody else who enjoyed a tremendous amount of success as an amateur. Similar, similar-ish types of style to you. You're both very well schooled. I actually, boxing twice as amateurs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's kind of where I was going. Do you see that your no. style is perfectly suited to somebody like Brad Foster? Um, I believe so, and especially with the little, little, little improvements we're going to be making. Um. I believe I'll, I'll, I'll like I say, I'm 100% sure I'll go in there and I'll, I'll win the titles. Um, however, however, whatever it takes. Brad Foster for me is a great, he's, he's, he's a great little boxer, and he's to say he's come from a kickboxing background or that sort of stuff. You know, you, you can't fault the kid, and you have got to respect what he's done. But 
I believe when he steps in with me, it'll be a, it'll be a level too high for him. And like I say, I'm ready to go out there in the next couple of fights and uh, snatch some titles off him. Well, we're kind of hovering around the super bantamweight scene. Let's talk about the world level. Obviously, you've got Murajan Akhmedaliev, who another former amateur star. There's Ray Vargas. I mean, it's a brilliant time to be a super bantamweight. Who do you currently see as the number one in the division? Well, for me, Ray Vargas has been there for a long time. Um, and to be honest, he's been there so long. I'm, I'm waiting for that, that decline. Because I, I believe someone like Akhmedaliev will beat him all day long. Um, don't get me wrong, he's a great fighter. He always has been a great fighter, fight, fighter Vargas has. But I believe he's getting a bit. He will be starting to get a bit too old, and uh, that'll, you know, that that's what 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 will beat him in the end. Uh, but yeah, Ahmed Ali is 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 a great fighter in my opinion. Someone that I watch closely in the amateurs because he was always at my weight as well. Um, so yeah, I'd I'd love to have that fight down the line, and you know, take or snatch them titles off him too. <laughs> There's also Emmanuel Navarrete as well. There, I mean, that's a fight that's been spoken about. I've been trying. Navarrete, to Navarrete's that another one. He's he's got a different sort of style because he's just pure work rate, mm. um, which is obviously like it's, it's it's hard to box. But for me and Leeds, I've got the perfect spine with Josh Point to that. Same sort of style. Keep coming. Never stop throwing shots. And you know, be, if if that fight does happen, it'll be the perfect sparring for me. UA31, that bit of advice from Shoaib Akhtar was top-notch. Never reduce your goals. Is he like a mentor to you? I didn't see this. I didn't see your live with Shoaib Akhtar. No, I've, I, put, I put a minute clip up. It was, the live lasted about 25 minutes, but if you look on my profile after, I put a minute clip yeah. up. But yeah, Shoaib, uh, obviously, he's, he's from the same same part of Pakistan as me as well. Um, part of my family even know him. Um, and it turns out I had a mutual friend, a very good friend of mine who um, knew him and he, he kind of sorted it out for me. And it's the first time, I, you know, we, we actually had a proper conversation in front of people and, you know, made it public that we know each other. But, uh, but yeah, he's, he's, he's a great mentor because of, because of what he's achieved in, in, in his own sport, in, in, the, in, in cricket. And he was, and he still, I believe he still is, he still is the fastest bowler um, to have ever lived. And, and just that right there and how far he got and how well he's doing right now is unbelievable. I, I even asked him a question. I said to him, do you, do you, do you miss cricket? And he goes to me, He's got a very smart, very clever ideology on, on, on stuff like this. And he said to me, I don't miss cricket, not one bit. Reason being, he goes, after you've achieved your goals, you should set other goals. Whether that's, for him, it was outside of cricket. He wanted to get into other things and, you know, invest in property, all, all that sort of stuff. And I like the way he, the way he thinks. And, and, and on top of that, like the person, the person who commented there mentioned, he's got a... He's very smart in the sense where he, he said he, he made it put plain and clear. You should never think that small when God gives you the capacity to think that think that big. And that that's, that was a perfect mindset. It's a great it's great to get um, that sort of inspiration from such an amazing uh, athlete. God, I remember I used to watch so much because I I used to play cricket. I played cricket for about probably seven or eight years, the Ralph yeah. Indy Express, man. He was, yeah, really, yeah. when he was at his best, he was an absolute pleasure. Unbelievable, yeah. I, 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 won't, I, won't be, I, won't, I won't like to be in front of him. I wouldn't like to have a cricket bat in my end on in front of that ball. Did you play cricket? I played a little bit more, not for a team or anything, more just with my family and my cousins and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I used to love cricket though, but obviously being from England, on being born, born and bred in England. Obviously, my parents were born in Pakistan in Royal Pindi, um, but I was born here. So I always, I found I was always swaying a bit more towards football and playing more football, being, you know, a, a bigger sport in, in England. And that's what I kind of, after cricket, when I was young, I kind of went into football. And then after football, it was boxing and boxing took over. The question here from MMA KOs Boxing, I think that is. Uh, it's got a Beza McGregor uh, profile photo, which disputes your name. But anyway, uh, question for both: Who wins out of these four? Do you both uh, do you both favour Haney, Ryan Garcia, Javante Davis, and Tiafimo Lopez? Um, I'm going Davis. I think Davis has, has proved a lot more in his career so far. Um, compared to all three of them, really, Haney, Garcia, and Lopez, um, he's beat the better opposition. And I've always rated uh, Davis because 
not just because he's had a hard life, because he's just so strong in the division. And someone like when he bought, when he boxed Walsh, Walsh is a very good fighter, and he made him look made made him look ordinary. And I've, especially since after that fight, I was rating him because because of that performance. Yeah, I think I'd I think I'd agree. Um, providing he can stay on the straight and narrow, which is a big yeah. That's um, he's like obviously as you do as well. I kind of come into contact with a lot of fighters in gyms and a lot of people kind of in and around his division. Um, and when I ask them who they don't want to face, or when I ask trainers and managers who they don't want them to face, Javante Davis is the name that comes up because he's so yeah, explosive. He's got yeah. that one punch knockout power, and you can't really prepare for that. He is so dangerous. Yeah, um, yeah. So I would probably say him as well. But having said that, the other three are both all very talented, and none yeah, of them are going to stay the fight. Light for very long. Yeah, they're all going to be the raw world level as well. But like I say, if out of the four, my my top pick would be Javante Davis, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. Ishi Ali Eight says Javante Davis versus Mikey Garcia. Um, first and first, I know Ishii, top guard boxing in Peterborough. Um, let me think. Davis, I, I like I, said, I like Davis' style better, but Garcia does it, does the basics very very well, mm-hmm. as he showed his last fight. Uh, but you know what? I'm gonna go Garcia. Just because, just because, yeah, I'm gonna go Garcia just because he's naturally bigger. Mm, I think I'm probably. You? I think I'll probably. I think I'm probably the same as well. I think he's the naturally bigger guy. He's the vastly more experienced guy. Um, but again, when you can punch like Javante Davis, yeah, exactly. Mike, Mikey would have to keep him honest for twelve rounds. Yeah, exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, next question: J three one George Saint Pierre MMA fighter said he never liked fighting. Slash was scared before a fight, but loved the achievement of winning and the feeling it gave. What's your mentality before a fight? See, with me, you know, when you talk about nerves, I'm, I won't say I'm a very nervous person, but the only time I do get nervous is in the changing room before a fight. All the way through camp, all the way through the lead up, I'm fine. But apart from when I get into the changing room and, and start warming up. And for me now, bear in mind, I had 200 fighters as an amateur. I've had eight fighters to pro now. Um, that's normal for me. It's something that if I if I don't get nervous before a fight, I think something's wrong. Like because because the times in the amateur when I haven't been nervous, I've not performed to my ability. And for me, the nerves kind of keep me sharp and keep me alert, which help, helps me a lot. But in terms of my mentality before a fight, that's right right before a fight. But I've I've never really been a scared sort of fighter anyway. Um, nerves and being scared are two different things. That's something both both things you have to start, learn how to control, um, especially the fear. Because if you let that get on top of you, then it doesn't keep you sharp. It it may it like it. What, what, what's the word? Fight or flight. That's when flight comes in. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I've never really been a scared fighter. I've always but I've always been nervous before a fight, and that's what's always always kept me sharp and alert in the ring. Yeah, I think most fighters would probably agree with that. You have to have that little bit of that little bit of tension in the belly and that little bit of nerves is is always good for you. And if you don't have that, then you may be in the wrong sport. Or you may uh, be in a little bit of trouble. Uh, Yusuf Patel yeah. says, "Who wins, Carl Frampton or Jamel Herring?" Carl Frampton all day long. I like Jamel Herring. He's a he's a workhorse, but um, I think technically and in terms of power. Uh, Frampton will have a bit have, have a bit too much for uh, Jamel Herring. Mm, that's an interesting fight. I was looking forward to that because they were going to do that in Belfast, and that's a brilliant place to watch boxing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But um, we have no idea when that's going to happen. Um, MMA KO's boxing Garcia not been tested and does leave his chin out. Uh, I assume you're probably talking about Ryan Garcia and not four weight world champion Mikey Garcia. Um, Ishi Ali Garcia used to fight at 130 he also used to fight at 126 but that was a long long time yeah. ago long time ago uh, he did well to come up, come up and, and keep his power well he was out for a couple of years wasn't he so I think he probably had some time to um, let's just say experiment with some weight training probably yeah. in that <laughs> period of time <laughs> <laughs> um, Hamza got S says Fury versus AJ so this Obviously, you can't take away um, Fury's achievements in his last fight. He looked unbelievable. Um, 
And AJ, his last fight, he showed another 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 side to him. Um, I genuinely do think this is a 50-50 fight. I'm not going to lie. Um, and, I, and I I like both fighters. Both fighters are amazing. And AJ is a very good mate of mine as well. And for that reason, I'm, I'm, I'm going for AJ because he's the best mate. He's one of my close mates. But like I say, I do see it as a 50-50 fight. It's one of those fights that the tactics on the night wins the fight. You have to get the tactics right. Because I don't think what Fury did to, to, to Wilder, Fury couldn't do that to AJ because... AJ's not that, what's the word? I kind of don't want to say timid, but the way he looked in that fight was very, you know, in 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 in, in, in respect, timid in many ways, Wilder looked. Um, and f- AJ's a bit more solid and he'll, he'll stand there and he'll trade back. Whereas Wilder, for some reason, in that last fight, it was all negative. Um, and the same with AJ. If AJ gets in close and catches... Um, Fury with the right shots and use the right angles I believe AJ will beat Fury, Fury all day long but like I say it's all about tactics in that fight for me um, but I'm going to go AJ without a doubt How important do you think if that fight were to happen Kez that AJ takes a little bit of the steam out of Fury by going to the body because AJ is a good body puncher he puts his punches together nicely and it would seem to me that fighting a 6'9 guy with that kind of reach going to the body would be the way to go early I think that's, that's that's actually a big key in, in the fight for me, AJ going to the body, because like like you say, AJ's a big lad, but if you see AJ standing next to Fury, you see how big Fury, you, you realise how, how tall and how big Fury is, and that's kind of what's helped him a lot along the way, because even like I say against Wilder, because he was so big compared to Wilder, Wilder's never really seen that before, because Wilder's normally the, the biggest guy in the ring when he, when he fights. Um, but yeah, it's, it's key to go to the body, because as soon as you can slow Fury down, that's he needs his feet. He needs to to punch and get away. As soon as you can slow Fury down to body, um, the sooner you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get to his chin. AK Academy Peterborough says hard against Frampton. How did that go? Again, AK Academy and uh, in Peterborough, I know these guys really well. Um, shout out to them. Um, and yeah, I sparred I sparred Carl. I think a handful of times. Um, and he's great. He's great. He's 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 a strong he's a strong lad. Um, he's a bit smaller than me, which actually makes him hard to fight. Believe it or not. Uh, but yeah, he's he's very good tactically. He's he's smart in the ring. He's fast, and he's and he's got the the power to go with it. And they were they were, they were very good spars. And um, yeah, like I said, I learned a lot from them as well. When did you spar with Carl? So obviously, me, my old coach being Kelvin Travis. Um, I was always in camp with Nigel, Nigel Kelson and Jamie Moore. Um, we was always training in the same gym, and whenever, whenever they needed the sparring or we needed some, we needed some rounds, they'd be, they'd be there to help. Everyone who I spoke to, I spoke to Josh Taylor, who's obviously a one forty fighter, and he's, he spar guys at one forty seven, one fifty four sometimes in camp. And he said that Carl Frampton is still one of the hardest punches he's ever, ever sparred or ever been in the ring with. Would you say that? No, yeah, definitely. He's he's one of them. He's not. He just thuds. It's it's, it's weird. Even his jab is is it's stiff, and he's he's like I say, he's very good. He's, and if you look at the shape of his body, even though he's smaller than me, he's very solid and, and he's very strong. And uh, that shows him when 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 he's sparring him. And don't get me wrong, being a counter puncher, I, I was glad I was a counter puncher that day because I was staying well away from him. <laughs> <laughs> Yusuf Patel one says, "Is Joe Cordina better at lightweight or super featherweight? For me, he's better at lightweight as he has more power there. I think he's better at super, super featherweight. We actually had had a, had a conversation with him. Again, he's a very good friend of mine. Uh, we had a conversation with him just I think just before he turned pro. We were talking about weights, and I was I was, I was talking about going to super featherweight, and he was he was actually his original plan was to go to go to super featherweight, um, but when he turned pro." He struggled with a few things. Um, I wouldn't say he was getting the diet wrong, but I think he might have been getting the, the wrong advice or something because his weight went flying up. But now, from what he's been telling me, his diet's perfect and he's making a super featherweight division easily. I know all fighters say that, but if he wasn't making it easy, talking to me as, as a personal friend, he'd have told me straight and he's making the weight perfectly. So I believe super featherweight's best for him and he's been looking amazing at it. I think... It's, it's 
a lot. It's a great division for him to be in as well because there's some good fights out there. And I believe, like I say, I believe, especially in Britain and even in the Europe, in Europe, I think he's he's he's, he's the best guy around. Yeah, I'd agree agree with that. Um, I think he's certainly much better down at Super Featherweight. I know he brought in a new um, dietitian and SNC guy. Um, yeah. And I, I, I won't say his name, but I, I spoke to somebody who sparred him since he went down to Super Featherweight, and they said he was um, he was very, very impressive. And as you say, I think Super Featherweight at the minute as well, there's a lot of good domestic fights you can make. Yeah. Um, yeah. Super Featherweight in the, in the UK is really booming. You've got kind of the Zelfa Parrots, um, Sam Bowens, that kind of level of guy. I know he's obviously pushing on to kind of European and wants to be moving on to a high level but there are some interesting domestic fights which I think would be a very interesting uh, no definitely Hamza S says Fowler versus Harold rematch interested to hear your opinion on this guys so I see, they're all coming out with, the, with all my best mates aren't they <laughs> but Fowler's <laughs> another, another, another mate of mine um, I, I know Scott as well the first fight like I say I've gone over this with Fowler for, again and again it was as simple as he didn't take him easy in training. He trained very, very hard. But in the ring, when he hit him, he was very surprised that he, he kept coming back. And that's what shocked him the most. So I believe now that he knows it's going to go that way and Fitzgerald can take a punch and he'll keep coming and you know he's, he's, he's going to try take the fight away from him at the end of the fight like he did last time. I believe for that reason, um, Fowler wins the rematch. Um, and like you say, that the first fight was close enough. But yeah, for the next fight definitely, I think I think Fowler wins. But provided you know, you got to send send your wishes out to Fitzgerald and and Fitzgerald himself, and uh, he's he's going through some testing times, and uh, hopefully he comes out and he can get we can get that rematch done. Yeah, just to echo that, we've obviously seen uh, Scott Fitzgerald has been in sporting chance and had some uh, issues outside the ring, shall we say? So obviously. From a boxing perspective, we hope that rematch happens. But from a personal point of view, I hope Scott Fitzgerald takes care of those issues it's, that he's it's, outside the ring. It must be hard for him as well, because like you say, in this lockdown, it's easy to go mad. And, you know, if from what I'm hearing, it's, it's, it's been very hard for him. But like you say, he's got, send, got him to send in Scott my best wish, wishes and uh, hopefully comes... Obviously, it's not the same as speaking to her, but what improvements do you expect Shane McGuigan to make with Anthony Fowler? You know, it's weird. After after his last fight, I, I went to his, I went to the Mancharina for his last fight. I know there was a huge issues about you know the opponent's boots and all that sort of stuff, and uh, Eddie had to buy him a new the pair of boots. customer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, weirdly enough, what that, that fight lasted what a minute and a half. But me knowing Fowler. I could see a change in him already. He's he looked a lot looser than I've ever seen him. Like a lot more relaxed than I've ever seen him seen him look. And that's key for key for me for Fowler because when Fowler did all his best work in the amateurs, winning the the world bronze medal, all that sort of stuff, he was. That's when he he, he used to box. He was nice and relaxed. He, he, didn't, he didn't rely too much on his power. Um, and that's what I see Shane bring bringing. Back into him that that just that relax relaxation, just uh, sticking to his boxing and not relying on the power, letting it letting it come. And I, I believe he'll be a better fighter with with that bit of work with Shane. And like I say, I saw it in in, in that that last fight, even though it was a minute and a half long. Yeah, I um, obviously spend quite a bit of time down at the gym with um, with Shane and the guys, and I know how disappointed Fowler was that he didn't get the opportunity to really showcase it to a greater extent. Obviously, having an opponent who. Uh, he looked like he was boxing on roller skates. Yeah, literally. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> you know what? I, I never realised how bad it looked until I watched it watched it back on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad one. Um, Hamed Javed eighty two says, "How long do you think? How long before you'll be ready to challenge for a world title?" Um, like I say, that's down to obviously Eddie and Matt Room, uh, my coach, management team. But I'm a fighter. I'm ready when, whenever the time comes. Um, if Someone asked me the other day, next five years, what what are your goals? And it's as simple as I want to be world champion or not. Just one belt, I want two belts. If not two 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 weights, if not more, you know, I'm 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 one of them people. I I took Shreya back to advice on boards, and uh, to be honest, I've always been like in 
that way inclined anyway. I've always, I've always believed that you got to reach as high as possible. You know, why reach for the stars? You can aim for the moon and all that sort of stuff. You know, what I, mean? I, I, yeah, read yeah. Too many, I read too many of them quotes, but it, they, they, they've stuck. They've stuck to me. They, they've stuck in me, and I've, I've always been very optimistic. And you know, I'm, I, I put in the hard work, and I'm ready to make them, them dreams, and you know, them, them wish come true. It's an interesting thing that you say that because I mean, whenever I always have to try and explain to people sometimes when they ask about fighters and who fighters want, any fighter will tell you the same thing. They will fight anybody, anytime, anywhere, for any yeah. belt. Um, and that's kind of it, highlights to me the importance of having a good team around you, people Definitely. guiding your career. If fighters were in charge of making their own fights, everybody's record would be a lot different. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And you know what else as well? I've, I know people set their own goals, but maybe it's because of how competitive I am and how, you know, how important my goals are to me and how, like, I never understand people that get into the boxing ring and say, I want to be a British champion. I don't know about you. Because for me, if, if, I've, I've always said from the start, if I'm going to do something, I'm putting 100% in. I want to be the best. I'm not, I don't want to go in somewhere mm. half-heartedly and just aim for a certain level. I want to be the best. And I've never really understood people that... People, people, people might disagree with this, but like I said, I've never really understood people that, you know, get into a sport and just want to be at a certain level. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, everybody obviously enters a sport for different reasons but if you if you yeah. as you say if you set your your goals and achievements up here and you fall slightly below then the chances are you still would have uh, achieved something pretty good so that's exactly. you, should, you should always set your goals as high as possible in my opinion hmm. AK Academy Peter Brett again says Usyk versus Chisora who you got and why Usyk all day long um, I've, I've always been a big fan of Usyk I've followed him through he the amateur career the yeah I followed him in the amateur career all the way through. And you know what? I always go back to when he boxed Joe Joyce. Joe Joyce was battering everyone in WSB, right? Everyone. No one could, especially over the five rounds, no one could handle the pace. But Usyk was the only person who... Not beat him easily, because it wasn't an easy fight for Usyk, but who just... Maneuvered, um, maneuvered him so well, and I believe Chizora would be the same sort of fight with Chizora, um, because Chizora is a come forward fighter. Not in my, not in my opinion, not as good as Joyce, or not as solid or strong as Joyce. But I think Usyk will outbox him all day long. Obviously, we mentioned the fact that kind of you would have seen a lot of Usyk as an amateur. He had an extensive amateur background, a lot of fights. He's now got to the point in his career where I always kind of look at the ex-amateur standouts and the ex-amateur stars. When you start creeping past that that 30-year-old mark, you start moving up the weight classes. Obviously, Lomachenko had a shoulder injury. He's got a little bit of wear yeah. there. We've now started to see the same thing with Usyk, where he's had to cancel some fights and pull out of some fights because of injuries in training. Do you think there's a... Is there a concern of him being up to heavyweight and what toll that might take on his body? Um, yeah, there's definitely a concern because, like you say, age just play a big factor but I believe that they'll, they'll be doing everything in a very smart way um, just from watching and hearing about the sort of training camps that Lomachenko and Usyk are, are a part of they're very smart they don't first first things first they don't just work on the body they work on the mind as well yeah. and that's a, a major part of boxing itself um, and yeah I, I believe yeah your body has you know boxing as a career has an age limit um, and your body does obviously age and there are issues that come with that, but I believe right now, the stage that he's at and how old he is, with the training, the smart stuff that he's been doing, I don't think for at least another two, three, four, maybe years, it'll be a problem, in my opinion. Yeah, I, think, I hope you're right, because I, I, there are a lot of fights that I'd love to see you stick in at heavyweight, but I think yeah. he's going to need to be at, well, I'll say 100%, no fight is ever 100%, but as close exactly. to 100%. Please. See, you've also got to remember, well, someone like Usyk and Lomachenko, they don't really get hit, mm. and that massively helps uh, the longevity of a, of, of, of a boxer. Um, and that's how people like Bernard Hopkins, Mayweather, and all them sort of fighters box for so long. It's, it's for them reasons. Another thing with, with the people at of them weights, at heavyweight, and all that sort of stuff, 
rumors are well, not rumors are they, they say that um, they peak a lot later as well in in their mm. career. So I, I guess that that will help them. So I'd, I'd say at least for hopefully five years, if you can get and get another five years out of them. Yeah, if you look at a lot of heavyweights can mature towards the end. I mean, like the the prime for a heavyweight is certainly later. You well. Obviously, people peak at different times of their lives, but generally speaking, a heavyweight won't peak until kind of 30-ish, 30, 30, 31. Yeah, um, definitely. Look at like Dennis Lewis, who peaks even later, in terms of mid to late 30s. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's a good point. I can't remember exactly where we were. I think we were kind of finishing off the Usyk Chisora chat. Um, Usyk yeah. versus Jay is a, is a fight that interests me. Yeah. It's... Another one, it's a very interesting fight. Um, a tough one again because Usyk's got all the ability in the world and he's very, very talented. Um, but just because of what AJ's done so far in, 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 his, in his heavyweight career and uh, the power side of stuff, I'm going to go with AJ again. What about you? Yeah, I think I, pro- I think probably the smart money would be on AJ's size um, because he is so much bigger. But yeah. and also, I am I am probably more wary than most, or more concerned than most about Usyk at this point of his career moving up in weight and how that may be affecting yeah. him. I think it's it's very important for Usyk, and I don't think he will bulk up too much to go up to heavyweight, but. I think if he's he shouldn't really be looking at coming in much heavier than about two fifteen, two twenty max. Um, essentially, what he would walk in the ring as a cruiserweight, just to keep the mobility, keep the speed, um, because that's how I think he's going to cause people like AJ problems. I think Tyson Fury stylistically, because he's bigger, longer, and so much yeah. heavier than Usyk, that's a really tough fight for Usyk. I think style yeah. wise. Whereas I, I think. Um, Usyk could have some have some success with his foot speed and hand speed with AJ. Certainly in the early rounds, but I think if AJ can get hold of him in the clinch and lean on him and and try and kind of use that added yeah. added weight, then he could have the um, makes a big difference. And, and, and same again, a, a major key would is is the body shots in that fight again because you, you got to slow Usyk down because mm. um, because you, as you've seen yourself, even for a big lad, he, he, he keeps moving for twelve rounds. Mm. And the first things first, you got you got to start slowing him down early on. That's, that's, yeah, I, I completely agree, and that's the thing, Sick, and I don't think Usyk will really much more weight than he would walk in the ring as a cruiserweight anyway. He was a big cruiserweight, so just come into the ring what you're comfortable at. Um, don't worry about bulking up too much, and just cr- try and keep that mobility and that speed. I mean, the way he boxed against uh, Murat Gassiev, if he can do that yeah. and replicate that heavyweight, he's going to be a tough fight for anybody. Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. I look forward to moving up, to be fair. We had some good questions. Yeah. Well, so we've seen obviously what his box um, has with a spaceman. I, I think it shows a mark of. I mean, we spoke spoke about like the, the Eastern Bloc fighters, but it, it's a measure of kind of how confident and how much Usyk and his team believe in his ability. He was gonna he was gonna box Alexander in his first fight at heavyweight. Yeah, 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 and that's a huge fight. It's, 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 it's yeah, fight. there would have been. I mean, like you consider where Povetkin is like, in his career. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right. Right, okay, we're we'll gonna try and get through. Some I'm still watching. I'm still, I'm still get the... MMA I'm still KO watching. We'll get before on charge. Because MMA. Yeah, no worries, no worries. <laughs> Is it very injury prone as soon as a heavyweight? Yeah. Okay. Also, awesome, <laughs> Tell you what, it's warm outside, isn't it? Well, I'm inside, and just to try and keep things quiet, and it's absolutely boiling in here. It doesn't help that I've got an Ellie Secback beanie on as well. <laughs> That's all right. All right, I've got charging my phone. What does Mr. Mr. Blake actually it's, it's very injury prone? Here's a little something for you, my trophies. Wow! There's a lot I in there, you know. Like I, 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 need a, I need a bigger case because there's so much stuff in there. It's all messed up everywhere now. Wow, that's some haul. That's a combo games. 
Which ones? Which ones? Your pride of will you your pride and joy in there? Which one is your? Um, I'm not sure to be honest. You know, I'm kind of. It would have been like I say, my, my most important thing was the Olympics, but because that didn't go go to plan because of injuries and all that sort of stuff. But I kind of put the amateurs past me, if that makes sense. <laughs> but I'll show you. Yeah, a yeah, no, of picture. course. You, you'll like this picture. Oh wow! When was that? Look at you in that. I know, a baby out of there. <laughs> I've got yeah, that. Yeah, look at that. I've got. Bear man, these two are two two of my all time favorite fighters. Oh wow! And then what? Another one. This is a bit of a a rare one. This. Oh wow! That's brilliant. Oh, that's some great. Out of those, who's your favorite fighter out of those three? So you know my my three all time favorites have always been um, Sugar Ray, Roy Jones, and uh, Penel Whitaker. Okay. So I've, so I've just got Penel Whitaker to go. I need I need that picture. <laughs> well, you're gonna struggle now, mate. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Penel Whitaker was my was was well, like I say, was my favorite fighter. You know, what's funny enough, I was, was I, I was watching him box. Um, De La Hoya last night. I know it wasn't you know, the best of fights to watch, but it, it came up on, on my feed, I think it did. So I was watching that the other day. Yeah, but yeah that's all that I needed. Was, um... just, just missed Penelope. Yeah, I know. It's a <laughs> shame. Yeah. He, um, he could really fight. Right, that's a, if, if there are people watching this who haven't watched an awful lot of Pernell Whitaker, go check out Pernell Whitaker. Only really, in my opinion, ever had one real loss. Which was against Felix Trinidad, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think the rest of his uh, the rest of his losses or the draw that he got. I think if it, if you go back or the, the draws that he got, if you look back, I mean that Chavez fight, he completely dominated Chavez. Yeah, he's yeah. a he was a brilliant fighter. Him against Roberto Duran is I always do those fantasy fights on on our channel. That's yeah. one that I always like to throw out at people. Yeah, that'd be a great fight, wouldn't it? Unbelievable. Mm. But for well, me, like, got some more fighters like. P Penel, Sugar Ray, Roy Jones. For me, that's where like the likes of Mayweather got the blueprint for print from, in my opinion, as 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 fighters. Mm, yeah. Um. But but yeah, Mayweather's obviously another one who's I've always been a huge fan of because of his fighting style as well. But obviously, and, and Ali for more of what he did inside and outside the ring, for not just you know for for boxing but for humanity as well. How would you think Floyd Mayweather would have got on with Vasil Lomachenko? I think Mayweather would have been just too big for him, in my opinion. Okay, both I believe of them if, one third. If, if it was the same way, and you know, I think Lomachenko would beat him. Well, one third. I think, yeah, I think Lomachenko is that good, but Mayweather smart. He's he, he'll, he'll he'll never lose no weight for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got a question. MMA KO's boxing says Spence versus who wins? Um, like I say, that it's it's another one. It's because of the weight. If they were both the same weight, like same size and same weight, I mean, and, and you know, you know, Crawford happening coming up and um, all that sort of stuff, I'd say Crawford. But I even, to be honest, I'm even swaying towards Crawford, even though. There's that weight difference, to be honest. I've always been a big fan of Crawford, and I believe he is one of the best pound pound fighters in the world. Yeah, I think I probably, I'm probably in the same camp as the first part of what you said. I've always thought that Spence is like, Spence is easy 154 pounder. Like, he's a massive welterweight. Like, you meet him yeah. in real life, he's got the frame, like, he's a big guy. And yeah. um, Crawford is, is certainly the naturally smaller guy. He started his career off at lightweight. Um, and also, I feel like Crawford. I think I still think Crawford's best wins are uh, Uriorkis Gamboa and Victor Postel. So you know, I remember, yeah, I remember that Gamboa guys... fight because obviously I, I was, some, cause I've always you know followed boxing very closely, yeah. especially being, being an amateur. I knew all about Gamboa, whereas a lot of people might probably didn't know much about him. Yeah. And, uh, I was sat with, my, with a mate of mine. I was watching the fight late at night. And I was saying, oh, you need to watch this combo. It's unbelievable. It's, I, I didn't know much about Crawford. Um, it was unbelievable. He should, he should win this fight, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, tell you what, in that case, I'm going uh, Crawford. 
and uh, he never let me live that day down. He goes, you may know about your boxing, blah, 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 all this sort of stuff. <laughs> obviously, Crawford winning in, in excellent fashion as well. Um, but yeah, Crawford, for me, he's definitely top three pound pound, in my opinion. You mentioned Gower. Um, obviously, we mentioned Salas, who you worked with for a, for a brief stint yeah. at the start of your professional career. I did, um, I did like an hour-long interview with Salas in Vegas, um, in February for Wild of Fury and he said to me we spoke all things obviously Cuban boxing with everybody Savon Rigondo Gamboa yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. all of these great Cuban fighters and he said that was the most naturally gifted out of all of them yeah and that was the thing with Gamboa even if you see him as, as a kid as a junior in the amateurs just had that extra something special about him but, um, but yeah for me Gamboa he he just went up too many weights. Simple as that. He he didn't need to go all up, up to mm. lightweight, like what the weight, all that sort of stuff. And uh, that's what I guess maybe he was he was chasing the big fights, all that sort of stuff. But it was always a worry because like, even even after lightweight, I think when yeah he's Hulk, a featherweight. He's not, he's not, he's yeah, he's nowhere he's, near like he's a I'm sure he's he's quite wide, but he's smaller than me height wise. He's not mm. he's not a big he wasn't even a big featherweight. But obviously, like I say, he was chasing some big fights and all that sort of stuff, and that's what um, ruined him in a way. Another thing as well is something Salah said. I mean, you've seen like over the years all these like former amateur stars like Adlani Solis, um, Mike Perez, like these Cubans yeah. who who they go from Cuba to Miami. All of a sudden, they've gone from like, a very regimented, very disciplined way of life to going to Miami, having money in their pocket. And I think we've seen that with Gamboa. And yeah, and other Cuban fighters who I've even met, and they've been drinking like when I've met them, and like they get they don't they don't always stay to um what's kind of got them to the position they're in. And I think we saw some of that with Gamboa. I think potentially wasn't as dedicated outside the ring as he should have been, and and that's why he ended up ballooning up. Yeah, definitely because it can make some like, like that whole that big change of lifestyle can make someone go mad, can't it? Um, and like I say, we don't even know to what extent their lives are like in Cuba um, but you can only imagine how much of a big change it was in in Miami but like, even for someone like me I've, don't get me wrong I've not I've not had the upbringings they have in that sort of country but if I was to move to Miami it, it wouldn't be easy to you know keep keep free. not not keep not keep in the gym because I'm, I'm quite motivated anyway and then I'm one of them people that I'm in the gym all the time otherwise I, I, I get bored um, but it wouldn't be easy to stay away from the things that can distractions. Get yeah, distractions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's plenty of in I've, there. heard all, I've heard all about you, Kez. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, Miami would be a good chat, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be all right. Yeah, Miami's not a bad laugh. Um, Aon Hader Shah says, opinions on Chris Eubank Jr. Have we seen the best of him? What's next for him? Chris Eubank Jr.? Um, I kind of... Without any disrespect to him, I kind of always said as soon as he fights someone that's good in the feet, he'll struggle, and that's kind of what happened. Um, especially the likes of like Rose and all that sort of stuff. He just needs for me that fight as well. It was he just got very cocky. He started believing too much of his own hype, and yeah, he's got immense power and he's strong. He's explosive, but that doesn't mean to not have a coach in the corner but now I'm glad he's got he's getting coached on board and uh, he's getting back on the right track but yeah he just needs to concentrate on improving technically and because he's got a lot of natural assets like I say with speed power explosiveness and if he gets the little things right I believe he, he can come back with, with, with a bang yeah I agree with that I think um, if provided he gets matched properly against the yeah. right styles he can look great um, definitely definitely who thought it was a good idea to put him in with Matt Vekorobov? I, I, I have no <laughs> idea. I mean, you. Were, I would assume obviously Matt Matt Vekorobov was before your cycle in the amateurs, but I'm, I'm yeah. sure there would have been an a, an element of a crossover where you'd have seen some of Korobov. Definitely, yeah. Because like I said, we like I said, me being one of them guys anyway. I kind of studied the old fighters anyway. Like 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 you mm -hmm. wouldn't you wouldn't expect me to. Be into people like Penel Whitaker. I'm, 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 I'm 27 year old. I'm not even in that mm. era, but, um, mm. but yeah, I, I always studied all the, the uh, amateur fighters when I was an amateur before as well. And Korobov was dangerous. He's <laughs> a best. brilliant amateur. Yeah, brilliant amateur, unbelievable. 
UA3, so Rob, thoughts on Dave Allen hooking up with Jamie Moore? How do you see his career panning out? Um, I think it's certainly a good fit for Dave, but Dave, um, how do I put this? Dave is always at the mercy of himself. Um, you can have Eddie Futch in your corner. You have to, you have to want it, and you have to do all of the right things. If Dave does that, then having Jamie for, Jamie Moore in the corner is a good idea. If Dave doesn't do that, then he could have Ray Arcel and or like Eddie Futch and the best trainers in the world. Yeah, yeah, I agree definitely. He's, he's, so, he's yeah, a I do, I do think it's a good move. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, J- Jamie's a great coach as well. Jamie and Nigel, I'm sure they'll take great care of him. But like you say, it's it's all down to him. Simple as that. Mm. UA3 Zone 1 says again how good is Luke Campbell Campbell's great I, I, I sparred him a lot in the amateurs and even when he turned pro um, he, he used to come down and spar with him quite a lot um, and for me you know that fight with Lunara has just showed exactly how, how good he is um, that was brilliant it was a brilliant fight anyway um, but sorry not, not Lunara Lomachenko one. Lomachenko Lomachenko. Well, the Lonara is one as well. Yeah, yeah. both, yeah, both really. But he sh- just in them two fights, he showed exactly what level he's at. And he's at world level, simple as that. And I'm looking forward to seeing him, you know, winning a world title because I, I believe he's more than capable of it. When you kind of look at the modern era of boxing and the amount of belts there are and the amount of divisions there are and the amount of vacant titles, franchise belts, super champions, regular champions, how unlucky is Luke Campbell in a sense as he's had to fight two pound for pound top ten guys? Lenares was there thereabouts at the time. Obviously Lomachenko was for his two world title shots. Can have got like a nice cushy vacant belt against like a, a top fifteen guy? See what you don't know about Luke, right? That's his mindset. I can guarantee he wouldn't have wanted it. I, yeah, I can guarantee you he'd have been offered other fights and offered Lenares and offered Lomachenko and he'd have gone, No, I want them to. I can guarantee you that it's just the way he is, and I've I've known that of him since 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 he's been an amateur. He'd rather fight the best because he's he's another one he wants to be the best. And he's somebody as well who I mean, even in his amateur career, right at the very start of his amateur career, I think he started off with four consecutive losses or something. Yeah. But when he eventually when he eventually hit the national circuit, he didn't get selected for the Olympics on the go around that he wanted to go, so he waited another four years. The thing with Campbell is that he does, as you say, he has that mentality where. If he wants to set his mind to something and achieve it, he will do it. And I think that all being well and he gets his another opportunity to fight for a world title, you wouldn't put it past him because he is that kind of character. Definitely, like I say, he is he's that good anyway. But that mindset is what gonna what's gonna get him the world titles because he's he's, he's ready to fight anyone. And I know what fighters are, but a lot of them just say it. But he's genuinely ready to fight anyone, as he's shown in in, in the past. And like I say, I, I look forward to seeing him become. A world champion. However, this um, WBA title situation pans out, I would love to see him fight Devin Haney. I think that's a really good fight. Yeah, yeah, and it's an easy fight to make, but both being uh, well, uh, under matchroom and all that sort of stuff now as well. So uh, it's another fight that'd be be a great watch. Uh, but again, I think through more through the experience side of stuff, I believe Campbell wins that fight. We're about, yeah, I definitely do think Campbell wins that fight. Hook Jab Boxing says Shakur Stevenson or Michael Conlon, who wins? So, obviously, I boxed Conlon myself in the amateurs. Um, boxed him twice, actually. Uh, and I sparred Shakur as well. But for me, I, I, I'm not really. This decision I'm not making off being in the ring with any of them. It's from what I've seen in how they've improved as, as professional boxers. And for me, Shakur Stevenson has made the transition and has improved as a pro a lot better than Conlon has. That's just my, in, in my opinion. So for that, I'd say at this stage, Shakur Stevenson. But Conlon, he's, he's, he's also, he's, he's, he's still learning on the job. He's, he's not had a huge amount of fights. They're both coming up at the same level. It'd be a great fight to see. And it is a 50 50 fight when it happens. But like I said, right now, just judging by how well they've improved as, as, as pros and how good they've, they've looked in the pro game and both should, should call Stevenson. And also, I mean, you can attest to this. This is similar to what we were talking about at the start of the um, the live with Conlon, obviously, went out and based himself in America. Things didn't quite work out for him there. He's come back over here. He now looks a lot more settled 
with Adam Booth and, and yeah. potentially that's the, the kickstart that he's needed to um, to show his best form in the pros. Yeah, definitely. Like I say, since it, for me, since he's come, come to Adam Booth, he's been improving at a much faster rate, in my opinion. So, like I say, when that fight is made, I believe it will be a 50-50 fight. But just judging by past performances, I'd go Shakur Stevenson. But there's also the argument that that I get quite a lot to win is that Shakur Stevenson is... He's been given a world title, you know. He's uh, he's he's had an easy route to a world title, and he's had easier fights. But like I say, it's 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 one of them pick and fights, isn't it? Rolls into the next question quite nicely. Shakur Stevenson or Josh Warrington? That's another tough one because you can't knock Josh Warrington for the people that he's beat. Um, and I'll I'll be, I'll be the first to say when he boxed Frampton. Um, and when he boxed Selby, I, I I didn't think he was going to win them fights, um, but he's proved me wrong again, again and again. So the last fight it was another one that it was it, it was a close fight, but I thought you know what I'm not even going to comment now because he's proved me wrong so many times. But like I say, you can't you can't knock the top level level of fighters that he's beat. So right now I'm going to say Josh Warrington, but Shakur still needs to prove himself first before he can. Um, before, in, in my eyes, I, I believe that he, he can beat the likes of uh, Warrington. Yeah, I think I agree with that. I do think, however, that the toughest fights for, for Josh Warrington are going to be your Gary Russells, your Shakur Stevensons, the guys with the good lateral movement, very yeah. hat, fast hands, fast feet, fast I friends. actually rate Russell highly. I've always rated Russell very, very highly. He's, got, he's always gone a bit under the radar in ways as well because he's not as, had as much exposure as a lot of the fighters. But, uh, but yeah, I think... The, the best fighter right now in that division for me is uh, Russell at the moment. Um, but like I say, I'm hoping Warrington get, can get in the ring and you know and, and beat him and, and take that title off, especially being from Leeds, where I'm, where I'm from. Yeah, get you on the undercard. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I agree with what you're saying with um, with Gary Russell. It's also kind of the perfect blend of being a little bit too good for his own good sometimes, not being very active. He yeah. doesn't fight all that often. He's not yeah. really a trash talker. He had that little weird thing with Leo Santa Cruz's dad, but um, the less said about that, the better. Um, but, I mean, you, you saw what he looked like against um, Tugstog the Ambiar in his last fight. King yeah. Tug's a really good fighter. He's a very good very fighter. Good very fighter. Good fighter. I've, as another one, I've always rated King Tug as well. Um, he's always been a quality operator. And he can punch as well, but... Mm. Gary Russell made him look ordinary, in my opinion. No, I think I don't think I think Tug probably boxed. He didn't quite box with the level of urgency that you would need, but he still yeah. boxed well. He he held his position in nicely. He boxed well, but Gary Russell just seemed to have an answer for everything in those first six rounds. Yeah, definitely. Tug's quite a he's a patient fighter, a very patient fighter. Mm. But like I say, that just didn't work with uh, Gary Russell, and he just had had an answer for anything that Tug did. Official Will Mike says, lads, very important question. We'll answer half because we have already spoken about most of it. Given how limited Wilder's boxing skills are, is Fury's win overrated? And how does Fury fare against AJ? Fury's win is definitely not overrated because, not just because the boxing side of stuff, but you've got to realise where, how, how, we, how we came back from that. Bear in mind, he lost all that weight. He had all them issues, as everyone, you know, learnt about. Um... And he still had the balls to uh, get in first with uh, with Wilder, um, and that was unbelievable in itself. Even though that first fight came out a draw, but then to fight him again after being knocked down the way he did just shows that mental strength again, and that's such an important thing in boxing. And you know, you, you can never write that achievement off because in however many fights Wilder's had, no one had done that to him ever. Not even come mm. close to doing anything like that to him and Fury came, came out and and just put up, put up an unbelievable performance and you know didn't, he didn't just take the titles he, should, he ripped them away <laughs> that's what you say like getting hit like he did in that 12th round and then not only coming back to fight him but coming at him to fight him in the next fight as well just shows you his mentality exactly exactly and you can never write that off Okay, uh, uh, Yusuf Patel one says, "Who do you think is the best prospect right now?" For me, it's Israel Madrimov, and do you think he can become world? Champion? 
It's a man who got a, a great fight, and I do believe he, he can become world champion. But for me, um, it's a tough one to be honest because the first fighters that come to mind are the English fighters. I mean, in Great Britain, for me, the best uh, prospect right now is Cordina. Um, but apart from that, someone who's not been documented a huge, a huge amount so far and is in the match room is uh, Yelushinov. And that's another, another fighter that I've seen in, come up through the amateurs. And I believe that they've not seen the best of Yelushinov yet. And I believe, that, you know, he was, he was quite similar to me. He was a, very much a, a back foot cat puncher. But um, the more opportunities he gets as a pro and the more time he has training as a pro and fighting as a pro, I believe he will... Uh, he'll get to the top and, you know, the, 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 the cream always rise to the top and I believe he's a very special fighter and I saw that in the amateurs and, and, I, know, and I know he can bring it to the program. I think he was he was slated to be facing Julius Ndongo, I think, in his next fight. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was. What he's do you a... think for that fight? I've only seen bits and bats of Ndongo. It's a very tough test, but for me, from what I've seen, ability-wise, of you lose from the amateurs and in the pros, I just can't write him off. And mm. not even just from what I've seen of him in, in fights, but I've seen him in, in sparring. He's just, he's, when he when he's, gets his rhythm, he's unbelievable. And I'm sure you'll see more, more and more of that as uh, as time goes on. But but yeah, that was, that was the first thing that came to, came to mind, to be honest, because yeah, there's, there's a lot of prospects around the world right now. I like saying in Great Britain for me the, the pick of the bunch is definitely Cordina, but someone over the shores it, it, it definitely felt like it felt like him in, in, in my mind. I'm going to um, suggest somebody who is actually linked a lot with Daniel Yulusnov, who Daniel Yulusnov beat in the Olympic final. Shakram Giasov, who um, yeah, fights he's looking very good. And, yeah, he can fight. Um, he, not, again, he, he can punch and. Again, hasn't set the world alight as a professional just yet, but it's kind of like what we've spoken about early on in here. It sometimes can be a case of, you know, the more successful you are as an amateur and the, the more ingrained you are in that amateur style, it can take you slightly longer when you turn over. Yeah, and people have to realise as well, like, same with me, I've only had eight fights compared to a lot of professionals when they, that haven't got the old Olympic um, background like we have. Um they get pushed a lot slower, so they have a lot more time to learn the trade, get used to pro game and all that sort of stuff, whereas people like myself, Yelushinov, um, Gearsol, we've all, we get rushed in a way. Uh, that, you know, we're more than capable of handling, but it just takes a little bit more time to be able to adjust properly and show what we're fully about. Uh, also, yeah, before we move on from that, you mentioned um, Cordina. Now, Cordina, when, when you speak to a lot of people in boxing, they will always mention his name as one of the top prospects in the world. But it seems to me like when you speak to fans, but I don't know whether or not it's because Cordina is not the type of bloke to be on social media all the time. He's not the kind of guy to, to be very vocal in interviews, etc. seems like his name doesn't always get spoken about. What is it about him that makes him such a great fighter? And why do you think that he doesn't maybe get the same accolades as other prospects? See, for me, over the years, first things first, I've done a lot of sparring with him anyway. I've seen him over the years, I've seen him improve, I've you know, seen him improve as a, pro as a professional now as well. Um, and yeah, he hasn't... For example, someone like Josh Kelly, who's another great prospect, he's a lot more flashy when he's fighting. You know, he's... So he's, he's a lot more vocal on social media, stuff like that as well. So, you know, he's, he's been... He's been very much in the public eye for them reasons. Uh, but Cordina is technically he's very, very good. As you know, he's probably mm. agree yourself. Um, he's not as flashy as as Kelly and he's not like I say as, as vocal on social media, but technically he's very, very good. And I believe at Super Featherweight he, he, he can punch as well. Um and at lightweight, but um even more at Super Featherweight in my opinion. Um but yeah it's just it's just one of those he's he just a very good fighter in terms of he can he can come forward when he needs to, he can go on the back foot when he needs to, he can stand his ground, he's good with angles. And I believe for that reason and from the performances that I've seen so far against credible opponents, he's he's, he's my, my pick of the bunch. Mm. Dylan Terry, sixteen oh five. Hello, Dylan Terry. Always pops by on the Insta lives. Thanks very much for stopping by again. 
He says, best trainer in the UK. Booth, Moore, McGuigan, Sims. Seeing as you're now with Angel Fernandez. Angel Fernandez, without a doubt. You're not allowed <laughs> to mention him. Somebody else. Um, I'm going to go. It's a tough one, isn't it? But who was the third one? He mentioned Booth, McGuigan. Booth, Moore. Booth, Moore, McGuigan, Sims, no. or anybody else? Um, I'm going to go Shane McGuigan. Just because, like I say, I, I believe I, I believe even that short period of time, he's done a lot of good for Fowler. And uh, I'm looking forward to see that, see more of that in the next fight. And I was just very impressed with how, how quick, how quickly... Even though, like I said, it was only a minute and a half at last fight, I was just very impressed with how quickly he's, he'd managed to bring that that relaxed side in Fowler back. And there's also, he's got um, Luke Campbell, who we've spoken about. Yeah, Campbell. Very well. Lawrence Crowley as Crowley, well. Yeah. And, and the fighters that he's had, he's had before, Andy, you know, he's Frampton um, and, and all them fighters, he's, he's done great things for all them fighters. So you can't really, in terms of achievement, achievements and resume, you can't really knock him. UA three one again. If Eddie bought a fight island, would you fight on there behind closed doors? I'm a fighter, you know. Like I say, because I was dying to fight before all this lockdown happened, and I was just gutted that it got cancelled. So I'd fight anywhere. I'd, I'd I'd be happy to fight anywhere behind closed doors. Yeah, it might be a different experience, no crowd, all that sort of stuff. But fights a fight for me. <laughs> I'm assuming you'd be you'd be more inclined and more used to that anyway from the time in the amateurs. You didn't always have packed halls as an amateur. Yeah, exactly. When you're fighting in freaking places like I don't know, Romania, Bulgaria, sometimes they don't they don't pull, pull yeah. a huge amount of crowds in. But um, but yeah, it's, it's something that the crowd does yeah, because of the experience that I have had in, in the small arenas and those sort of countries and in in the, at the big stage, the Commonwealth Finals, Olympics, all that sort of stuff. The crowd doesn't really bother me. It doesn't really faze me. It faze me in any way. Okay, right. A couple more questions, Kez, and then I'm going to let you go, my friend, taking up enough of your yeah. time. But we'll do this regularly, particularly while we're um, locked down with nothing. Hayda18 says, can't say that, but seems like a lot of uh, this is, is turned into a bit of a debate in here. I know you know. Yeah, and it's not just that this time. I do know Amir, Amir well, but it's not just that. I do believe that Calm, yeah, Paul is a great fighter and he's strong, but he's very rugged. In, in many ways, and you know, he's. I just I just believe Khan outboxed him because Khan's always been one of the fighters. Yeah, he's been knocked down and, and knocked out a few times and all that sort of stuff, but he's only been knocked down by the biggest of punches and the ones that have managed to hit him with that perfect shot. Whereas Porter, he's very, like I say, rugged and you know, wrestle, and the shots aren't as clean as, uh, as some of the fighters that he's boxed. But yeah, I'd go with Mia Khan for that because I do believe whenever he is fighting, he has that amazing work rate, first of all. He has a hand speed and he's, he always seems to be unbelievably fit. I believe what he'd be able to do, he'd be able to keep uh, Sean Porter at bay for, for 12 rounds. Hook Jab Boxing says, have you sparred Hopi Price or Charlie Frankham? I sparred Charles years ago. Um, before I even turned pro, with, with Salas actually. Uh, Charles is, 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 is a good kid. Um, Obviously, back then I was I was just com coming back from injuries and stuff as well, and he was he was actually in the gym at the time, so I thought you know let's do a do a, bit, do a few rounds with him. But uh, but yeah, Charles another one. He's a he's a quality fighter. He's actually part. He's believe it or not, look at that how it's all turned around. He's part of my camp now as well. <laughs> but yeah, Charles a quality <laughs> fighter, and I uh, look forward to seeing his progression progression as a, as a pro as well. Okay, right. We're gonna do one last question. We'll do a little bit of a well. You can however you want. Um, Has Nan TMT again. If I've got that wrong, I, I really apologise. Top five pound for pound all time. Let's have it. So, who's your top five pound for pound all time? Of all time, um, Muhammad Ali. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to do this in, in in any order. I'm just I think what's coming to mind. Ali would be first, but the rest I order. <laughs> but uh, Muhammad Ali, yeah. 
Sugar Ray, Penel Whitaker, Roy Jones Jr. And Floyd Mayweather. Okay. That's, yeah, that's for now, yeah. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going with for now. The first, I, I just chose the first five that came to mind as the best fighters, so. <laughs> that's not a bad five, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I agree. <laughs> Okay, okay. All right, mate. Well, Kez, thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate your time. No, any time. Thank you for having me. Like I say, we'll do this more often. Absolutely, mate. We'll, uh, we'll sort something out in the next week or two, okay? Definitely, without a doubt. No worries. I'll speak to you soon. Okay, all right. Thanks very much, Kez. Everybody, thanks very much for stopping by. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the um, WBA Continental Super Bantamweight Champion, Kez Ashbeck. Thanks very Not much. Man. Speaking Take care, boys. Take care. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate.